we have studied a particular one dimensional system that is uh, the harmonic oscillator in some detail uh, in the last several videos but here we want to talk about one dimensional systems in general so i'm not going to assume anything specific so if i want to write down the lagrangian of a one dimensional system which let's say is um which I'm going to label by a coordinate Q, the generalized coordinate Q, then the Lagrangian would be, as you are already familiar, would be the following. So L will be, the Lagrangian is half A of Q, Q dot square minus the potential energy, which is a function of Q. Okay, remember that there will be uh, a function here which depends on Q. This is because you have gone from your Cartesian coordinates to generalized coordinates Q. Okay, uh, now here you see the time does not appear in the Lagrangian, the way I have written here, which means that this will have um, integral of motion or what we call Jacobi's integral, okay, which will be uh, a conserved quantity so that energy function or Hamiltonian function that will be a conserved quantity and you can immediately obtain H I think this is what we called earlier HQQ dot and this will turn out to be uh, A of Q Q dot square plus U of Q and for the system this will be constant throughout the motion and it will be some number E okay which we call energy now frequently we are going to encounter a situation where the aq is a constant which you have seen earlier in uh, in, in our several discussions during uh, studying harmonic oscillators so frequently we were having uh, a of q to be one or some constant so uh, let me write this frequently uh, often we will encounter a of q to be a constant okay let me call it a naught okay and what i can do is i can so here i can i will have a naught i can do a scaling of time and i can take mm, yeah let me see yeah so let's do it here so i have half a0 dq over dt square okay and if i define uh i mean i, I can just write it like this half dq over d t over square root of a naught square okay that's the same same thing as above perfect so if i define my new time to be like this okay then you can see that i will get rid of the a naught okay so under a time scaling i will be able to um, write the lagrangian as half q dot square minus u of q okay that's good um, and now your hamiltonian would be or the energy function would be h will be half q dot square plus u of q perfect now we want to solve um, uh, this system in general but i don't need to set up the equations of motion using all our lagrange equations because i can use this integral of motion okay and set up a first order differential equation okay so let me write down this thing this is um, 
I will um, to solve this problem we can use the first integral of motion Okay, and remember this is a first order differential equation. Okay, so let's do that. So here I have half q dot square plus u equals e, e is a constant. All I have to do is take u to the other side and take a square root and then I get a, a expression for q dot which I can integrate. Okay, that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so as I said, I can write the previous equation which I had like the following. So I can write half q dot square equal to e minus u of q. Okay, note that even before I start look integrating things, look at the left hand side. Left hand side is a square of a real quantity, right? because q is real so q dot has to be real which means that this can never be negative which says that the total energy of the system should always be greater than the potential energy that the system has at any q value i mean if a system is at some q then the system should have a total energy which is more than the potential energy that the system has at that point okay so e minus u of q should always be greater than equal to zero okay so that's the um, uh, constraint we have and as you may be aware that this is not necessarily true in quantum mechanics okay but classically you see that this has to be obeyed okay now let's start uh, looking at how we'll get a solution. Um, let me integrate this equation, this one. So I get q dot 2e minus u of q. Okay, and that entire thing will be in a square root. And I can integrate this. So you write this as dq over dt so I take dt um, I mean I can jump one step there's no need to write again so basically I'm put taking dt there and I'll bring this expression below dq and I'll do the integral which will give me t to be dq over 2 e minus u of q square root and there will be a constant of integration okay that's what you get and let me just put the integration variable to be q prime okay mm, yeah now this is a um, i mean if this um, this this provides a solution so i can know where the particle is at uh, I mean if I okay uh, before I say that let's look at the following um, you have you expect two constants of integration because your system is really described by all other Lagrange equations which are second order differential equations okay so there should be two constant of integration constants of integration but now um, we have not really solved those but does not matter whichever way i solve if my equation is going to be described uh, by a solution which will have two constants of integration it should have here also so as you may see you already have those two because one is a constant which you have got by doing the integral and another one is e and both of these you are going to control by uh, 
your uh, initial conditions meaning these are determined by your initial conditions okay so let me um, do a little bit more i can write this as so let's say i say that when q is equal to so i, I do away with this constant okay i'll i'll do a definite integral now so i will put q from t equal to 0 to q of t okay so this is a definite integral now okay and this i want to choose to be zero okay let's call this this equal to zero so what you have basically is the following zero to q of t dq prime over 2 e minus u of q prime correct okay now so if i can calculate this integral uh, if you are given a u of q and you see it's only the potential energy that de describes this system okay so if you are given a u of q you can do this integral and get t as a function of q okay and in principle you can invert it it may not be possible always but you can invert it let's say and then you'll have the trajectory but in any case we call that the problem has been solved because we have t as a function of q in principle okay that's nice but what we will do now is try to say things in general by just looking at the potential energy function okay this u of q and as you'll see uh, a lot can be said for one dimensional systems okay without doing uh, any integrals without doing anything that's my next task okay so let me draw a potential energy graph okay what happened yes so along the horizontal axis we have q here on the vertical i have u of q that potential energy and in general what you can have here is that the potential may have some places it becomes it takes a local minimum at some places you can have maximum the function could be going to zero at the infinity okay uh, these kind of uh, things can happen and there's the most general feature you can put in your potential energy function so i'm going to draw a graph uh, here which will be uh, uh, depicting a general situation so what i do here is i just choose the place where i have a minimum to be at the origin okay the, the one of the origin uh, one of the minimum of this potential i choose to be at the origin which you can do okay you can always do so and let's say the potential is it's not looking very nice okay it's doing something it goes let's say i don't want to it, it to be more parabolic okay 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 something of that sort so this is one of i mean this is a most general situation it has a maximum minimum you can have uh, maxima here also there is you can put several maximum here but the general feature is this okay so let's say um, my system is described by such a potential energy and i choose initial conditions such that the total energy of the system e lies somewhere here let's say it lies um, somewhere here 
So let me draw a horizontal line here. You will understand why I'm doing so. Uh, maybe I can choose some color. Okay. Okay, so this is E. Okay, very nice. And let me also indicate these points. Mm. Let me call it Q. A Q B Q C and I want to label these points as A, B and C. Okay, and this point as E one, this point as E two. Okay, perfect. Now, you see, um, let's say you start your system with this total energy E, which I've specified now, somewhere in this region, okay, somewhere in this region. Now, if you do so, then because E1 is a, uh, I mean, nothing to do with E1, but let's say you start it here or here, it does not matter. And it's moving, let's say the system is moving in this direction, okay, so its Q is uh, going towards QA. Now it will have a kinetic energy here, because of which it will be able to climb up to the point A. And at this p place, it will run out of its kinetic energy because your potential energy will be equal to the total energy, so your T has to be zero. But there's a force which is still acting on in, in this direction, okay. So the system starts moving backwards. So this point is called a turning point. So the point A is a turning point. So the system starts rolling backwards, goes further here, shoots up to B, and it again runs out of, runs out of kinetic energy. And it has to turn backwards. And so B is another turning point. Okay, so as you can see that if you have started somewhere between A and B, then the system is going to oscillate from A to B. Okay, it will keep oscillating uh, back and forth between A and B, and it will have some time period, T, which we can determine by doing those integrals, but that is what is going to happen. Okay, so that is... Uh, one situation which can happen in a general potential, but let's say you don't start your system here. You start your system to the right of C. Okay, let's say somewhere here or here at, at some such values. And let's say your system is moving in this direction. Then what will happen is it will keep climbing up. By climbing, I'm just using the analogy with with a, with a hill or something but it keeps climbing up the curve and it, when it reaches point C, then it runs out of its kinetic energy because your total energy is going to be U, and, but still there's a force in this direction, so it goes there and C is again a, another turning point and it rolls back towards uh, positive Q, okay? And it never returns back, it just keeps going on if, if nothing is, if there is no other um, maximum there or if there is no maximum which is as big as uh, this line E. So it will keep rolling down and it will be gone to infinity, okay? That's what will happen. So your point C is also a turning point. Your point E1 and E2, as you already know, these are points of equilibrium. One is stable in this case, another is unstable. But this is all that can happen in, in this system, okay? So one, it can oscillate back and forth in such a place or it can go here um, and, and get lost to infinity, that's all. 
there are other possibilities which can occur if you choose a different kinetic energy or dif different um, total energy for the system. So let me try to get that one. Okay, let's see. Now suppose you start with the total energy which is equal to E2. Okay, so your total energy is E2, but you have started here, so you have put the system here where the potential energy itself equal to E2, so it stays there, nothing happens. Un if it is not disturbed, it stays there forever. Okay, so that is what's going to happen. Similarly, if you put the system here with energy equal to, in this case, zero, because you've chosen the origin to be here, then it stays there forever. Okay, so these are all possible motions that can occur in a one-dimensional system. Okay. Let's see what more I want to say. Okay. I'll give you an exercise here. So what you have to show is the amount of time the system takes in going from A to B will be equal to the time it will take from going from B to A. Okay, so show that. Time taken in going from A to B is equal to time taken in going from B to A. Okay, that is what you should show and all you have to do is use the equations of motion. You don't have to solve anything and think uh, why this should happen. Uh, from your experience, you already know that this will happen, right? That I mean, this should happen, but what you have to do is show explicitly from equation that indeed this will happen. Okay, so let's proceed further. Let's ask what will be the time period of oscillation if our system is oscillating between A and B. Okay, and that's quite simple to say. What happened? Okay, something not very nice. Okay, let's mm, add one more sheet. Okay. So time period of oscillation which is just the time it takes from going from A to B and back. Okay, that will be T, this will be DQ prime over, this is what I wrote earlier, 2 E minus U of Q prime, okay, and then you have to integrate from QA to QB and it will be the twice of it because it takes the same amount of time. Okay, and as you can see that the values QA and QB are determined by your uh, the total energy that the system has, right? Because up to where this will climb will depend on the total energy that you give. So whether it goes only up to here and here or up to here and here depends on the total energy that your system has. Okay, so Q A and Q B are basically functions of energy. Of the total energy. Okay. Now let's take um, a specific example. Maybe I should go to the next slide. 
or he itself. So I want to take this example. My system is the following. I'm taking a one dimensional system described by the following potential. So here I take the potential to be symmetric at least in this region not necessarily parabolic it, it is some function but um, it is symmetric and beyond that it's not so let's say it's like this and this one is let's say it goes whatever it does but as far as let's say this point this is let's say lying on a horizontal axis between point A and point B so QA QB between these two points it is a symmetric uh, potential okay so that's one assumption so let me write it down potential is assumed to be symmetric between QA and uh, symmetric about origin between Q A and Q B. Okay, that's the assumption. And let's say I start my system with some total energy E. And let's say the energy corresponds to here. And this point I call Q naught. Okay, that's the total energy of the system. So what will be the time period of oscillations when the system is put in uh, in this place, in this location? So it has to go from here to there and back. That will be the time period. But you already uh, know, because I gave an exercise, that the time it takes in going from here to there is the same as it takes in coming back. Okay. But then I have on the top of it chosen the potential to be symmetric. Okay which means the time it takes in going from here to here okay that is one fourth of the time period okay so here the time period t is four times the time it takes in going from uh, 0 to q naught zero to q naught i hope that is that point is clear the the sole reason i why i took it symmetric around this was uh, this um, symmetric okay that's nice and of course your q naught is determined by energy so let me write q naught is a function of energy now what i want to do is um the following let's define q tilde to be q prime over q naught okay if i do so then my dq prime is q naught dq tilde okay that's good so what is my time period now time period of oscillations this is four times integral zero to one because when your q prime is q zero your q tilde is one okay so i have um, removed the dependence on energy from the limit of integral that's fine now my dq prime is q0 dq tilde 
divided by 2 e is a constant but e is equal to the value of the potential energy at this point right so e is equal to u of q0 let me write that u of q0 minus u of q prime and this entire thing sits under a square root okay that's good mm, okay no i should not write a q prime i should write q0 q tilde q0 and q tilde here not looking very nice so i'll clean it up q0 q tilde and this is in the square root all looks good here okay fine I can write this as T equal to 4 over square root of 2 0 to 1 dq tilde over um, u of q0 minus u of q0 q tilde okay that's correct and then you have 1 over q0 square on this entire thing in the square root all I've done is put this q0 into the square root here that's all nothing beyond that okay so um, note that in general this time period of oscillations will be a function of q0 okay um, and this q0 is really the amplitude of oscillations right because that is the maximum distance it will come up to and which is determined by the energy as we said before so in general in general t is a function of q0 and remember q0 is the amplitude or i can also say that t is in general a function of um, e total energy e right because q0 is determined by e okay now um, let's ask whether it is possible to choose the potential energy to be such that that t does not depend on q0 okay and it's um, it's clear what we should do if q if this entire function it thing is not a function of q0 then the uh, denominator should not be a function of q0 so what we are asking is if we look at u q0 minus u of q0 q tilde okay 1 over q0 square that's what you had in the denominator if this thing which is a function of q and q0 let's call it f if this were not dependent on q0 then the time period will be independent of q0 then time period of oscillations will be independent of the amplitude independent of the amplitude of oscillation okay now for what potential will that, that happen clearly if i choose u of q0 or u of u of q let's write to be something uh, some constant times q square then clearly you will have a 1 over q0 square from here this will be proportional to q0 square this will also be proportional to q0 square which will cancel with this q0 square and it will be independent of q0 so you see for quadratic potentials the time period of oscillations is in is independent of the amplitude 
and also of the energy of the system okay if the potential energy of the system is not quadratic then this is not true okay so uh, that's nice so let's write it down uh, what if, if this then that um, okay so only for quadratic potentials t is independent of of amplitude or energy okay that's good and this is the reason why when we study simple harmonic motion or uh, small oscillations our um, time period was independent of amplitude or the energy of the system because we were under an approximation in which the potential energy was approximated to be quadratic okay but the moment you deviate from quadratic approximation you will see that the time period will depend and that's what we will uh, look at in um, a few examples which I will take up next.